After arriving in 2018, OSIRIS-REx spent nearly two years orbiting Bennu, mapping and studying its rugged terrain. So asteroids are the leftover remnants from solar system formation. So they're a pristine example of planetary building blocks and studying them helps us to understand how the Earth and all of the planets in our solar system were formed. On September 24th, the spacecraft will approach to nearly 63,000 miles from Earth. It will power up and release its sample return capsule. So on Sunday, our spacecraft will release the sample return capsule. It will enter the Earth's atmosphere and it'll descend down through the atmosphere on parachutes and it will land on the desert floor in the Utah Test and Training Range. Uh, at that point, our recovery team will pick up the capsule. They'll put it in a temporary receiving facility. And the next day it flies to the Johnson Space Center where it'll be opened up in a clean room and all those samples will be processed and curated. And about 25% will be sent out to scientists around the world for study. And all that rest of it will be archived for future use in experiments we haven't even thought of yet. The capsule will streak into the atmosphere at a blistering 27,000 miles per hour. It will race across the western U.S. and begin to glow with heat, allowing infrared trackers on the ground to chart its progress. The capsule will extract and deploy its main parachute one mile above the ground. It will make its final descent. After ground teams retrieve the capsule, the Bennu samples will be taken to NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. The sample canister will be opened in the Astro Materials Acquisition and Curation Facility, and the samples will be curated, distributed, and studied for decades to come. So OSIRIS-REx launched in 2016. It took about two years to catch up to Bennu and to get into orbit. And then we spent about two years mapping the surface down to the finest detail, the smallest pebbles, uh, looking at composition, and basically trying to find that safe place where we'd be able to grab a sample. And then we spent some time very carefully rehearsing getting that sample, where we first would match the asteroid's rotation and then very slowly descend to the surface. Uh, when we collected the sample, we very, very quickly touched the surface, collect the sample, and back away. Uh, after we had that, we, uh, about, we took the sample in October 2020. Uh, we left in uh, a couple months later, and it took all the rest of that time to come back to the Earth for what we'll see on Sunday. OSIRIS-REx is NASA's first asteroid sample return mission. It launched in September 2016 on a journey to explore a near-Earth asteroid called Bennu, carrying out its primary science objective. On October 20, 2020, the spacecraft ventured to a small crater in the asteroid's northern hemisphere. It dodged jagged rocks and towering boulders and plunged its arm into the loose surface, excavating six tons of debris while collecting about 250 grams of material. OSIRIS-REx stowed its bounty and closed its sample return capsule. So our laboratories here on Earth are far more sophisticated than anything we could fly in our spacecraft. And so we'll be taking those samples and looking at what they're made of, looking at the different sizes of particles, but we'll be looking for uh, carbon-bearing minerals. We'll be looking for organics, amino acids, the building blocks of life, as well as evidence that there was hydration in the past on Bennu's surface, because all of these things are the sort of materials that were delivered to Earth that helped life flourish here. As it pushes deeper into the atmosphere, the capsule will rapidly decelerate, subjecting the Bennu samples to a punishing 32 Gs. So Bennu was full of surprises. Um, a lot of things surprised us, but probably the first one was that when we arrived, we quickly saw the surface was covered in big boulders. And we had expected to see depressions or craters that were full of loose you know, sand and dust that would make it very easy for sampling. And we didn't have those. So we had to very carefully rethink how we would do the sample to be able to get down between these boulders and very carefully pick up a sample. So Bennu is a very special type of asteroid called a carbonaceous asteroid. And that means that it's very dark and it, we, we expected it to be completely covered in these carbon bearing materials. These are organics, these carbonates, uh, which are so crucial as building blocks for life. And so we picked it for that reason, but also because it was a near earth asteroid. So it was accessible. It was something we could get to fairly, fairly easily.
We, we had a number of challenges in doing the sample return. Um, we had to, of course, match the asteroid's rotation rate so that when we tried to touch, we weren't just spun off in space. Um, but another challenge we faced was that our sample actually has contact sensors. So it would touch the surface, knew it touched, and then blow its gas to loosen up that material. Um, but we never actually got a signal that it had contact. Instead, a backup timer went off to do that whole sequence. And that's because the surface was actually softer than we expected and we kept sinking in, which meant we were actually able to have this work in our favor and get a big sample. So we're really excited to see what we have. We have a nominal EDM burn and we're bringing the samples home. So exciting.